Coming in at 5, West Virginia Penitentiary. Opened all the way back in 1875, the West Virginia Penitentiary in Moundsville is said to be one of the most haunted prisons in the states. The first building constructed on the site was the North Wagon Gate, which was made with hand cut sandstone. The state used prison labor during the process and work continued on this first phase up until 1876. Following completion, the prison consisted of the North Wagon Gate, North and South cell blocks, a kitchen, dining area, hospital, and chapel, as well as a four story tower connecting the two administration buildings. The prison also included space for female inmates and personal living quarters for the warden and his family. Once the prison opened, it housed 251 male inmates, including some who helped construct the prison where they were incarcerated. The condition of the prison worsened throughout the years, and the facility was eventually ranked as one of the top 10 most violent correctional facilities. On Wednesday, November 7th, 1979, 15 prisoners escaped from the prison, one of them being Ronald Turney Williams, who was serving time for murdering Sergeant David Lilly of the Beckley Police Department. He managed to steal a guard's weapon and reached the streets where he encountered 23 year old off duty state trooper Philip S. Kesner, who was driving past with his wife. Kesner attempted to take action against Williams, but he was shot in the process. The prison was home to riots, fires, and nearly 100 executions during its time in operation. To this day, visitors have reported sightings of phantom inmates and a shadow man wandering the premises, as well as unexplained voices and cold spots. You can take tours around this haunted penitentiary and even view the electric chair dubbed Old Sparky. For you brave souls out there, you can also do an overnight session if you dare. Coming in at 4, North Bend Rail Trail Tunnel Number 19. North Bend Rail Trail is located in Ritchie County in West Virginia and is a favorite for hikers, cyclists, and horseback riders traversing the 72 mile long trail. However, proceed with caution if you wind up in the area, particularly around tunnel number 19, also known as the Silver Run Tunnel. History goes that on one foggy evening in 1910, an engineer spied a young woman in a flowing white dress standing on the tracks. He brought the train to a stop, but when he searched for the woman, she had vanished. He wasn't the only one to spot her either, many of his predecessors had as well. No one quite knows the origin of the woman in white, although some bones were found under a house near the tunnel. Some people say you can still spot her. Now, those who explore the tunnel are advised to bring a flashlight even during the day, with the tunnel being over 1,376 feet long, which is beyond sunlight's reach. You have been warned. Coming in at 3, Droop Mountain Battlefield. On November 6, 1863, the Battle of Droop Mountain occurred in Pocahontas County, West Virginia during the American Civil War. Confederate forces engaged but failed to prevent Union forces under General W. W. Averill from a rendezvous with other federal troops in a joint raid on Confederate railways. Droop Mountain was one of the largest engagements in West Virginia during the war and essentially resulted in the Confederate collapse. The battle the battlefield site is now preserved and administered by West Virginia as a state park, and the unknown Confederate dead are buried in the Confederate Cemetery at Lewisburg. A wooden observation tower, hiking trails, and picnic tables mark the grounds where the Civil War soldiers fought, died, and some say still remain. Many visitors have reported sounds of galloping horses and sightings of the ghosts of headless Confederate soldiers, as well as one soldier lying asleep against a tree. Coming in at 2, Lake Shawnee Amusement Park. In the late 1700s, the Clay family moved to West Virginia, which is presently known as Mercer County. The Clay family, comprised of Mitchell and his wife, settled on an 800 acre farm and raised 14 children. However, in 1783, tragedy struck while Mitchell was out hunting. A few members of the Shawnee tribe killed two of the Clay children and burned another at the stake. In retaliation, Mitchell hunted down a handful of Native Americans and killed them. The land in turn became unoccupied for years, up until the early 1900s when Conley T. Snyder purchased the land and built a small amusement park on it. However, the amusement park had just as unfortunate luck as the Clay family. The park featured a ferris wheel and a swing ride and was popular among locals, particularly families of coal miners who resided in the area. In the early 1950s, a young girl on the swing ride was killed when a truck delivering sodas accidentally backed into the ride, striking her. Another child also drowned in the swimming pool, which was subsequently filled in to prevent further accidents. During its operation, at least six people died at the park, which resulted in the park ultimately closing in 1966. In 1985, 
1995, Gaylord White, a former employee of the park, purchased the land with plans to reopen it. It happened for a brief period, that is, before the park closed again after a 1988 archaeological dig uncovered numerous Native American artifacts, as well as human remains on the property that had been buried prior to the arrival of the Anglo European settlers. In total, 13 skeletons were uncovered, mostly of young children. Perhaps the property is cursed, or perhaps it's just a series of unfortunate events. Who knows? But one thing is for sure, it is one of the most haunted places in the entire world. And finally, coming in at number one, the Trans Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. The Trans Allegheny Lunatic Asylum, also known as the Western State Hospital, was a Kirkbride psychiatric hospital that operated from 1864 to 1994 by the government. Originally built by Richard Andrews, it was constructed from 1858 to 1881 and was originally designed to hold 250 people. However, it became overcrowded in the 1950s, with the hospital housing 2,400 patients, resulting in it being forcibly closed in 1994 due to changes in patient treatment. Following its closure, it was then purchased by Joe Jordan in 2007 and is open for tours and other events to raise money for its restorations. During tours of the facility, witnesses have reported door slamming, shadowy figures, and even blood curdling screams from within the building walls. The asylum has garnered such a spooky reputation, it has appeared on shows such as Ghost Stories, Ghost Hunters, Ghost Adventures, and Paranormal Lockdown. It was also featured in Bethesda's 2018 video game Fallout 76 under the name Fort Defiance and acted as a base for the Brotherhood of Steel, one of the game's main factions. Number 5 on this list is Sismaju Hotel. Located in Bucharest, this hotel was initially built over 100 years ago in 1912 and was first called the Palace Hotel. It was called this because it truly was a marvel back then and was one of the most beautiful spots in the country. The architect who built it owned the property until 1948 when it was ultimately taken by the state. This is where it was given the name that it has today. For the next 20 years or so, the hotel thrived and wasn't only just a spot for the super wealthy to vacation, but was also a spot of parliamentary meetings and other things of great importance. In 1970 though, this hotel shut down. It was simply a side effect of the communist wave that was sweeping through this part of the world and therefore the hotel was neglected for 20 years until finally it reopened in 1990. It wasn't used as a hotel anymore though, but rather as student housing for the students enrolled in the Academy of Film and Theatre. It was during this phase when Sismagu Hotel saw the tragedy that haunts it to this day. Nellie Bajan was a young student who was staying here during her time in school. The semester had come to an end though and it was Christmas time when the incident happened. She was one of the only students who didn't go home for Christmas and instead decided to stay in her dorm. One evening she was walking down the hall and due to some of the lights being out, she stepped into the elevator shaft where there was no elevator waiting for her. She fell down several stories and landed at the bottom of the shaft, writhing in agony. She didn't die immediately though. In fact, it took her over three hours to finally die from her wounds. Three hours where she was screaming and yelling for help, but nobody could hear her because they were all home for Christmas. Now her spirit haunts this place and many students have reported hearing cries for help coming from nowhere. Some have seen her ghost standing at the end of the hallway, looking as if she's desperate for someone's attention. The sad thing about this is that if it would have happened at any other time, when students were in the building, she likely would have been saved and never would have died at all. Just a horrible tragedy that's left its mark on this hotel for good. Number four on this list is the Witch's Pond. So this is a bit of a weird one. The Witch's Pond is a very small collection of water in the Boldu Cresteca Forest that's said to be haunted. A few legends have come from this place. The first one, which I don't actually think is true, but I'm gonna tell you guys anyways, is that Vlad the Impaler was decapitated here. Now it could be possible that this did happen, the truth behind Vlad's death has been debated for centuries, but I find it unlikely that the killers would take him out to this pond in this forest and do it out here. The second legend, which I think is far more likely and probably did actually happen, is that a witch was killed here. An article on the subject writes, as the legend goes, 18th century villagers put a witch to death in the woods near a swampy pond in colonial era cemetery of Equia Creek. Her name, it said, was Edith and her body was tossed into the water. This killing is how the pond got its name, the Witch's Pond. After she was killed, strange occurrences started happening here that couldn't be explained. It's said that the water turns blood red in the springtime and sometimes people see a witch-like figure hovering over this bloody liquid. In other reports, there's a sacrificial altar that's spawned here and she's standing by it waiting to sacrifice sacrifice someone. The sound of bodies being thrown into the pond along with a witch's cackle can be heard ringing throughout the forest. Locals avoid this pond and you should too. Also if you think about it, it's just a small pond so 
I don't really know why you'd be going there anyways. Number three on this list is Yulia Hezdu Castle. Bogdan Hezdu was a Romanian intellectual who was very wealthy at the end of the 18th century. Bogdan, even though he put lots of effort into his work and business, put the most of his time into his daughter. Yulia Hezdu was his daughter and in Bogdan's eyes could do no wrong. That's why when she passed very unexpectedly at the age of 19, Bogdan fell into a deep depression. While she was alive, she was rather remarkable. In her early teens, she knew seven languages and had already graduated several prestigious schools for piano and vocals. She apparently excelled at her schooling as well and was set to have a very fruitful life if she hadn't been taken too early due to tuberculosis. Bogdan, as I mentioned, didn't respond super well to this and reacted by building the Yulia Hasdu Castle. Little did he know that it was going to be haunted. Apparently he partook in spiritism sessions with people who were trained in reaching out to the dead. In these sessions, he would communicate with his daughter's ghost and she would tell him how she wanted her castle to be constructed. This is how it was built and everything that he decided to do and tell the architect apparently came directly from the ghost of his daughter. Her ghost didn't just leave things be when this castle was finished though, in fact, she fully took up residence here. It's said that the ghost of this girl can be spotted walking throughout the halls of this castle very often. Many people report hearing the sound of a piano playing, assumingly at the hands of this ghost. What's even creepier though is that this piano playing will instantly be followed by the applause of her dead father. Also, this castle has several rooms specifically made for spiritual rituals and also an area to worship Satan. From what I've heard, the ghost here isn't particularly dangerous in nature, but it still sounds like one of the creepier spots in the whole country. Country. Number two on this list is Poenari Fortress. This fortress has been riddled with death and destruction ever since it was first built. Even though in the first part of this series we talked about Dracula's castle, this is the castle where Vlad the Impaler, the inspiration for Dracula's character, spent a large part of his time. It's said that he saw the ruins of a fortress here at the beginning of his rule and thought that it would be a great place for a stronghold. He enslaved his enemies and worked them around the clock to revive the fortress to its former glory. Many of them died due to the extensive of labor and fatigue and those who didn't were killed by being impaled. Now it's said that some of their spirits haunt this place, but they aren't the only ghost that still lingers here. The most notable haunting of this place is actually done by Vlad the Impaler's wife. During Vlad's reign, this fortress fell under siege by his enemies. Vlad was able to escape the castle, but his wife wasn't so lucky. The castle was falling, and rather than get captured by the oncoming army, she decided to fling herself off of the castle walls over top of a cliff. Her body fell far and dropped into a river River many hundreds of feet below. It's said that the river ran red with blood and it was nicknamed the Ladies River following this. Her ghost now forever wanders around this castle restless. Some say that her soul can never find peace because she could never forgive her husband for abandoning her all those years ago. This is why locals say that she has it out for any married men that visit the castle. Although visiting this castle would definitely make for a fun day trip, it might just not be worth it. Number one on this list is Hoi Bachu Forest. Often referred to as the Bermuda Triangle of Transylvania, this forest is on pretty much everyone's list when it comes to the most haunted forests in the world. It all started when in 1968, a military technician took a photo of the area and captured what looked to be a UFO hovering over top of the woods. An article from My Best Place writes, after this incident, other inexplicable events soon followed, including the disappearance of a shepherd and his 200 sheep which were never found again, and the disappearance of a five-year-old girl who later reappeared five years later wearing the same clothes and without having aged even one day. There have also been many first-hand reports from people who have entered the forest only to come out with burns, severe rashes, headaches, and a high fever which they didn't have before. Some studies have revealed higher than usual radioactivity produced by natural uranium present in the subsoil. The part in that article about burns and rashes and other things is one of the most common reports described by the people who go here. It seems that everyone who enters into these woods leaves with some sort of trauma. Most of that trauma is mental though. Feelings of despair and depression are widely documented from pretty much everyone who steps foot into this forest. All of the numerous reports, the photographs, and the general lore around this place has to make it the most haunted spot in all of Romania. Definitely not a forest that I recommend going to if you're looking to get outdoors. Coming in at number five, we have Hotel Park Central. Located on Central Avenue in Albuquerque, you'll find Hotel Park Central. The original building was constructed in 1924 and served as a hospital. It was then purchased in the 1980s and transformed into a mental health hospital. However, in 2010, a major renovation occurred with a $21 million investment and it became the luxury hotel that we know today. The hauntings in this building date back to the time it served as a hospital. 
patients would report seeing apparitions, hearing voices, seeing objects move, and feeling the presence of other beings when nobody was there. As well, when it was a mental hospital, it was known by patients and workers that on the top floor on the right wing, there is a ghost of a woman that likes to watch people in the hallways. Patients also reported having their bedsheets pulled off them in the middle of the night. Patients were not the only ones to experience things that couldn't be explained though. Staff of the hospital did too. They would often have the sensation of being watched, as well as hearing something whisper in their ear, the movement of objects, and a general sense of heaviness throughout the buildings. Today, many guests at the hotel report similar paranormal experiences, as many guests report feeling watched in the presence of unseen beings. They have also reported hearing voices and shuffling in the stairwells. Several guests have also seen a female apparition on the third floor wing. A group of paranormal investigators were brought onto the scene of the hotel. The investigators were three team members who all experienced unexplained voices and whispering while close to the hotel. They also reported distinct coolness near their bodies and a sense of being watched. After reviewing their evidence, some of these experiences were captured on digital voice recorders. They also carried out the flashlight technique, an attempt at communication with the spirit that involves the answering of questions through the turning on and off of the flashlight. This was a success with several responses captured on video. In at number 4 we have the St James Hotel. Built in 1972 by Henry Lambert, the St James Hotel was established. Found in Cimarron, New Mexico, the hotel is known to be one of the most haunted places in America. The St James Hotel is said to remain host to several restless spirits. Both the owners and the hotel guests will tell you that many unexplained events haunt it. Several psychics have visited the hotel and specifically identified three spirits and many others who passed through to relive their experiences. The hotel's second floor is the most active, with stories of cold spots and the smell of cigar smoke lingering in the halls. A prior manager commented about the spirits that linger in the hotel and said, you never see them but you do feel and hear them. Another report from a former owner states that she walked into the dining room and saw a pleasant looking cowboy standing behind her in the mirror on the front of the bar. The spiritual activity of the hotel has been featured on the popular television show Unsolved Mysteries and A Current Affair. Room 18 at the hotel is kept locked because it houses the ghost of an ill-tempered Thomas James Wright, who lost his life at his door just after winning the rights to the hotel in a poker game. Having been injured from behind, Wright continued into the room and slowly met the end of his life. Because of the tragic accident that happened in room 18, it is known as one of the scariest and most haunted rooms. This can be seen with one former owner who said she was pushed down while in the room and on another occasion saw a ball of angry orange light floating in the upper corner. The staff considers the room to be the most haunted and people are rarely allowed to enter this room, much less sleep in it. Rumours abound that when the room was rented, several mysterious deaths occurred there. Other unknown entities are also said to roam the hotel, creating a host of paranormal activities. Staff report that items constantly fall off walls and shelves and electrical equipment at the front desk behaves unpredictably. Others have reported cold spots throughout the historic inn, lights that seemingly turn on by themselves, feelings of being watched by unseen eyes, and cameras that cease to work inside the hotel, strangely returning to normal after leaving St. James. In at number 3 we have Kaimo Theatre. Built in 1927, this grand palace of a theatre certainly is a masterpiece of Pablo Deco fused with Art Deco. The creation of this beautiful southwestern style theatre was financed by a hardworking wealthy entrepreneur, Orest Bacecchi, who wanted to fulfil a lifelong dream of building a grand theatre which would rival other larger than life movie palaces that were springing up around the United States. A large fire in 1963 destroyed Kaimo Theatre's iconic stage and much of the building, prompting the Bacecchi family to demolish it. In 1977, the same year, the theatre was listed on the National Register of Historic Places. The citizens of Albuquerque voted to purchase Kaimo Theatre at a steep discount. In return, the city of Albuquerque offered to fund the restoration of the landmark attraction. With the change of hands, local restoration experts were hired to restore Kaimo Theatre to its former glory. The hauntings of Kaimo Theatre can be traced back to a freak accident that happened in the late afternoon on August 2nd, 1951. Back then, hundreds of moviegoers were in Kaimo Theatre to catch the latest films. Without warning, a water heater located in the theatre's lobby exploded, sending scalding hot steam and plaster into the air. A total of eight people were injured in the accident, including one person losing their life, Bobby Darnell. Since then, the theatre is said to be haunted by the ghost of Bobby. Performers and staff of Kaimo Theatre have all reported strange and unexplainable activities happening in the theatre. In particular, donuts placed backstage for performers would often go missing. To appease the spirit of Bobby, an altar was erected beneath the stairs to the dressing rooms. Toys, sweets and donuts would be placed before every major performance, 
to ensure the success of each show. Those who didn't would face a disastrous performance. Kaima Theatre's technical manager Dennis Potter recounted an incident in December 1986 when the donuts were removed by Andrew Shear, director of A Christmas Carol, just minutes before the first show. It did not take long before the disaster occurred. Electrical cables fell, lights exploded, doors on the set opened without warning, and performers had forgotten their lines. After the end of the disastrous show, the donuts were promptly replaced and the next show went off without a hiccup. However, an interview with Andrew contradicted the Potter's story, with the former claiming that the donuts were never removed or replaced. Apart from the unexplainable disruption, staff working at Kaimo Theatre have also reported seeing the ghost of Bobby, dressed in a striped shirt and blue pants. The ghost of Bobby is often seen loitering on the lobby staircase, looking for the next victim of his harmless shenanigans. In at number two, we have La Fonda Hotel. Standing in Santa Fe, New Mexico, there is the historic La Fonda Hotel. Over the years, the hotel was destroyed and rebuilt several times over. In 1821, when Captain William Becknell blazed the path of what would become known as the Santa Fe Trail, he stayed at a La Fonda, where the trail terminated at the town central plaza. As more and more pioneers traveled the Santa Fe Trail, the La Fonda became a popular destination for trappers, traders, mountain men, soldiers, politicians, and the like. The current La Fonda was built in 1922 on the site of the previous inns. In 1925, it was acquired by the Atchison Topeka Santa Fe Railroad, which leased it to Fred Harvey. For more than 40 years, from 1926 to 1968, La Fonda was one of the famous Harvey houses, a renowned chain of fine hotels. Today, the La Fonda Hotel is said to host not only travelers visiting Santa Fe, but also several ghosts. Some people believe that the Honorable Judge Slough continues to walk its hallways. However, more often reported is the ghost of the distraught salesman who jumped into the well after losing all of his company's money. The hotel's dining room called the La Plazuela is situated directly over the old well and both guests and staff alike have reported the sight of a ghostly figure that walks to the center of the room, then seemingly jumps into the floor and disappears. Other reported phenomena include a ghost that haunts the Santa Fe room, as well as the spirit that walks the hallways near the La Terraza, a restaurant located on the east side of the hotel's third floor. In the 1970s, a ghost reportedly called the front desk to complain that someone was walking up and down the hallway in front of his room. When an employee was sent to investigate, he saw a tall man in a long black coat disappear into a stairwell. However, when he followed him to the stairs, there was no sign of the mysterious visitor. And finally, in at number one, we have the Luna Mansion. The Luna Mansion in Los Lunas, New Mexico, is known for one thing, and it's its ghost stories. Over the years, the Luna Mansion in Los Lunas has gained a reputation as being haunted. Guests and staff alike have shared stories of unexplained activity, which some chalk up to the paranormal. Over the years, the mansion changed hands several times before it was purchased and renovated as a fine dining establishment in the 1970s. It was then that the ghost of Josephina began to appear. Perhaps she didn't like the renovations, or maybe she just wants to stick around to make sure they were doing a good job on the home that she had spent so many years looking after. Dressed in 1920s period clothing, she had been described by employees as appearing very real. Most often, she's seen in two former bedrooms on the second floor, an attic, storeroom, and at the top of the stairs leading to the second floor bar. At the top of the stairs sits an old rocking chair, which she has often been seen sitting in and rocking slowly. On one occasion, when an employee approached the ghost, she simply stood up and then slowly vanished. More often, she is seen walking up and down the stairs, a habit that has been so commonplace that employees barely notice anymore. Where there's one spirit, others seem to follow, and more ghostly apparitions have been seen at the mansion. One of these is a former servant named Cruz, who was thought to have been a groundskeeper. Most often seen on the main level, he is said to be particularly friendly to women and children and likes to play practical jokes on the employees and patrons. On one occasion, he was seen sitting on a sofa as if waiting to be served. Dressed in vintage attire, the man was relaxing patiently when a waitress asked another staff member why he hadn't been served. However, the response was, what man? And when the waitress looked back to the sofa, the vintage spirit faded away. Coming in at number five, Hill of Crosses in Lithuania. Located in Lithuania, the Hill of Crosses is a site of pilgrimage about 12 kilometers north of the city of Cholet. Now, the precise origin of the crosses is unknown, but it is believed that the first crosses were placed on the former Damante Hill Fort after the 1831 uprising. The uprising was, of course, known as the Polish Russian War and was an armed rebellion in the heartland of partitioned Poland against the Russian Empire. Ever since then, not only crosses and crucifixes, but also statues of the Virgin Mary have appeared on the Hill of Crosses, as well as carvings of Lithuanian patriots and thousands upon thousands of tiny effigies and rosaries have been brought here by Catholic pilgrims. Now, as you would expect, the exact number of all these items.
items is unknown, but it is estimated to range between 50,000 to 100,000. Over the years, the place has come to signify the peaceful endurance of Lithuanian Catholicism, despite the threats it faced throughout history. Throughout history, the Hill of Crosses has been used as a place for Lithuanians to pray for peace for their country and for the loved ones they had lost during the wars of independence. The hill eventually became a place of defiance once again during Soviet occupation from 1944 to 1991. The hill and crosses were bulldozed by Soviets three times, but locals kept rebuilding it. So sweet. In at number 4, Myrtles Plantation, USA. The Myrtles Plantation is a historic home and former antebellum plantation in St. Francisville, Louisiana. Built in 1976, it is considered to be one of America's most haunted homes, with a variety of legends surrounding the plantation. Now, one of the reasons Myrtles is believed to be so damn haunted is because it is rumored to be on top of an ancient Tunica Indian burial ground. As of right now, it is currently a bed and breakfast and offers historical and mystery tours. As I previously mentioned though, it is considered to be one of the most haunted homes in the United States, with it rumoured to be home to at least 12 ghosts and is often reported that 10 murders occurred in the house, but historical records only indicate the murder of one. William Winter. William Drew Winter is also a very popular character in the plantation. He was an attorney who lived in the home before being shot by a stranger. It has been said that after he was shot, he staggered inside the home and died trying to climb the stairs. He died on the 17th step. Even today, visitors still claim to hear his dying footsteps. Coming in at number 3, Battleship Island, Nagasaki, Japan. Also known as Hashima Island, this is the abandoned island nearby the city of Nagasaki in southern Japan and is one of 505 uninhabited islands in Nagasaki Prefecture. In the 1950s, it was a bustling place, home to thousands of coal mine workers and families. However, ever since the coal mine shut down in 1974, it has remained abandoned. As petroleum replaced coal in Japan in the 1960s, coal mine Mines began to close across the country, with Mitsubishi officially closing the mine in January 1974, and the island was completely cleared by April of the same year. Today, its most notable features are the abandoned and still mostly intact apartment buildings, the surrounding sea walls, and its distinctive profile shape. In 2009, Japan requested to include Hashima Island along with 22 other industrial sites in the UNESCO World Heritage Site list, which was initially opposed by South Korean authorities on the grounds that Korean and Chinese forced laborers were used on the island prior and during World War II. Although Hashima was entirely closed off until 2009, travelers are now allowed to visit with it being recognized by UNESCO in 2015. You may also recognize the site from the big screen with it serving as the secret headquarters of Bond villain Raoul Silver in the 2012 movie Skyfall. In at 2, Lizzie Borden's house, Fall River, Massachusetts. Now for those who don't know, the Lizzie Borden house is where Lizzie Borden and her family lived and is located on 232nd Street in the city of Fall River, Massachusetts. Born Lizzie Andrew Borden, sucks for her, she was an American woman who was the main suspect in the August 4th, 1892 axe murders of her father and stepmother. However, Borden was tried and ultimately acquitted of the murders. The case received widespread newspaper coverage throughout the United States and following her release from jail where she was held during the trial, Borden chose to remain in the house her parents had been killed in, despite being ostracized by her other residents. Now, because the Commonwealth of Massachusetts elected to not charge anyone with the murder that occurred over 127 years ago, a ton of speculation about the crimes have continued on. Now, Lizzie spent the rest of her life in the home up until her death at age 66, just days before the death of her sister Emma. The house has been operated as a bed and breakfast since 1996 under the ownership of Martha McGinn, who inherited the home. According to Martha McGinn, the room where Lizzie's stepmother Abby Borden was found murdered is the most requested room at the bed and breakfast. Guests who stay, not just in Abby's room, but in the home as a whole, have reported all manners of strange sightings in the home. Would you dare stay there? I would. I'd stay in every room. 
And finally coming in at number 1, Chernobyl, Pripyat, Ukraine. Pripyat is a ghost city in northern Ukraine named after the nearby Pripyat river and was founded on February 4th 1970 as the ninth nuclear city in the Soviet Union to serve the nearby Chernobyl nuclear power plant. The city was officially proclaimed in 1979 and had grown to a population of 49,360. By the time it was evacuated on April 27th 1986, the day after the Chernobyl disaster. Now the Chernobyl disaster disaster was a nuclear disaster which occurred on April 26, 1986 at the nuclear power plant not far from Pripyat and was considered to be the worst nuclear disaster in history and is also one of the only two nuclear energy disasters rated at 7, the maximum severity on the international nuclear event scale. The other being the 2011 Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster in Japan. Ever since the nuclear disaster in Pripyat, the city has remained entirely uninhabited since the evacuation, although the buildings, furniture and all other signs of life are exactly where the former citizens left them. It is a city frozen in time, plates still out, dolls left on beds and even a haunting fairground ride waiting to be used. Weathered books can be found in classrooms and abandoned photographs are still hanging on walls in their original frames. There are strict rules regarding the site considering the sheer amount of radiation in the area, however, following the airing of HBO's Chernobyl series, Ukraine's government have announced that the site will become an official tourist attraction. Will you be checking it out? I personally don't want to die, so I won't. In at number five, we have Ghost Castle. In the town of Bios in Serbia on the slopes of Frescogora mountains rests an abandoned building in ruins and long forgotten. Known originally as the Spitza Castle, it was once one of the most beautiful sites in all of Serbia, with glass gardens, peacocks and deer, somewhere you would only hear about in a fairy tale. It was built in the late 19th century by Edward Eddie Spitzer, who was the co-owner of the Biasin Cement Factory. Spitzer hired the famous architect Imri Stindl, best known for his work on the Hungarian Parliament building in Budapest. The architectural styles of Spitzer Castle include elements of Gothic, Renaissance, Baroque and Romanesque art. In 1889 the mansion had been finished and the Spitzer family moved into the castle and lived there until World War II, then leaving in 1941 and moving to Germany. After the war the ownership of the castle went to the state and then at various points in time it hosted a school, library, the first Biosyn radio station and a restaurant, but as time went on, the building was slowly deteriorating. It was also used as a film set for many movies, including the 1970 American war film Kelly's Heroes, starring Clint Eastwood. Today, the castle is deserted, surrounded by wires, without door or windows, and crumbling rooftops. The locals had nicknamed the building as the Ghost House due to many people hearing, seeing, and coming into contact with paranormal entities. On more than one account, people hear footsteps and screams coming from one of the bedrooms. This this creepy, decaying building is scary enough, but many dark tourism enthusiasts come here to see if they too can come into contact with any ghosts and haunted beings. There is a theory from the locals that a boy was roaming the home with his friends, but had gone off on his own and never returned. The boy's friends said they heard screams and when they had run over to the area it was coming from nothing. They had searched in and around the building, but the boy was never found and to this day people still hear his screams. This is one place you should never visit because you may never come back. Coming in at number 4 we have Devil's Town. Devolja Veros, which translates to English as Devil's Town, is a very unusual rock formation said to be created by soul erosion. These peculiar rock towers are located between the Devil's Gully and Hell's Gully near the town of Kursom Lija in southern Serbia. Located on Mount Radin are more than 200 stone formations, 2 to 15 meters high and up to 3 meters wide, with strange stone caps. This particular place is a huge tourist destination, not only because of its beautiful and unique looking rock towers, but also because of the legend surrounding this eerie place. Locals believe that these weird looking rock formations are actually petrified remains of a cursed wedding party. Apparently these poor people drank from a nearby spring which attracted the devil himself who tried to cloud their minds and force a brother and sister into marriage. Once the word got to a local fairy she decided to interfere and turn them all into stone. The locals still insist that the area is haunted by the devil and refuse to spend a night there. If you're brave enough to go to this cursed place, all I have to say is don't overstay your welcome. Devil's Town and their odd looking rock towers continue to be a very rare natural phenomenon and was actually a nominee in the new 7 wonders of nature campaign. Definitely one of the most visited places in Serbia whether it's because it's beauty or it's haunted past, it's unknown its true origins but it's definitely a very creepy place. If you're still willing to travel and see this place maybe just leave before the sun sets just in case. 
Coming in at number 3 we have the Skull Tower. This stone structure is located in Nis, Serbia and almost 1000 human skulls are embedded in the walls. Constructed by the Ottoman Empire in 1809 following the Battle of Sagar during the first Serbian uprising. During the battle, Serbian rebels under the command of Stephen Sindelik were surrounded by the Ottomans on Siga Hill near Nis. Knowing that he and his fighters would be killed if they were captured, Stephen detonated a powder magazine within the rebel entrenchment, killing not only himself but also his fighters and the Ottoman soldiers. After this massacre, the governor of the Romelia, Ialet, Hushid Pasha, ordered that a tower be made from the skulls of the fallen. The tower is 15 feet high and consisted of 952 skulls embedded on four sides in 14 rows. So many lives were lost at the skull tower, and the history and skulls displayed are proof of that. And many believe that these lost souls still roam the area and is considered to be a very haunted attraction in Siberia. In 1861, Mithat Pasha, the last Ottoman governor of Nis, ordered that the skull tower be dismantled, but that did not happen. It was eventually restored and the chapel was renovated in 1937. In 1948, Skull Tower and the chapel enclosing it were declared cultural monuments of exceptional importance and came under protection of the Socialist Republic of Serbia, and further renovation of the chapel occurred in 1989. Many Serbians see this display as a symbol of the country's struggle for independence. As of this year, only 58 skulls remain in the tower walls, and Sindelec's skull is said to be featured in an enclosed glass container next to the structure. The Skull Tower is a very popular tourist attraction, visited by 30,000 to 50,000 people annually to see this eerie and creepy display. Coming in at number 2 we have Mount Ratanj. This is a mountain located in eastern Serbia between the towns of Bolijevec and Sokobanja, and is one of the highest peaks in Serbia and is another huge phenomenon. Many stories have emerged from onlookers and tourists that go to Ratanj, stories about unusual flying objects which circle around the peak, fiery spheres, aliens and voices in unknown languages have been some of many things people experience here. This mountain is also talked about by many due to its beauty, size and perfect geometrical shape resembling a pyramid. Ratanj actually has the same angle of inclination as the Pyramid of the Mood in Mexico, and same angles as the Pyramid of Cheops, and many believe that this is not coincidence. The mystery surrounding Ratanj is still the reason for many scientists' arguments. Some say the mountain is actually an ancient pyramid, a natural wonder, the work of a higher power of even aliens. Another local legend explains that the castle of a wizard was located on Ratanj Mountain, where he held his treasure, but the castle had eventually disappeared within the mountain, trapping the wealthy sorcerer inside with his treasures, making this a very popular location for treasure hunters in search for lost gold and gems. So many questions loom over Mount Ratanj and has created a whirlwind of theories and tourists to come and try and experience the many things rumoured to happen here. Others come to Ratanj for the rare healing herbs that grow on the mountains and it emits a type of energy which is beneficial to human health, but this is only a rumour. Everyone who has visited this mountain say they experience a mysterious energy. We may never know if this is positive or or negative. And finally in number 1 we have Sava Savanovic's Mill. This is one of the most well known places in Serbia for its ghost stories. This mill is located in the hill of the small village of Saroj in the west central part of Serbia, three hours away from the town of Belgrade. The story is that Sava Savanovic was a vampire and the first ever vampire that resided at this mill. According to one story, Sava was a wealthy cattle trader and he had fallen in love with a much younger girl who he had proposed to but she had rejected him. Blind Blinded by anger and jealousy, he decided to kill the girl. After the locals of Saroj found out, they beat Sava to death and buried him outside the local cemetery. But actually, Sava had risen and became a vampire and began drowning everyone who would come to grind grain in his mill. For years, the locals of Saroj lived in fear of the murderous vampire until they came together and stabbed him with a hawthorn skate, killing him forever. And legend says that a butterfly escaped from Sava's grave, which meant that Sava is still visiting the mill to this day. Day. The citizens of the village tell many stories about the horror they have faced from this creature, and it's the most known horror story throughout all of Serbia. And in 1880, one of the most famous Serbian authors, Milovan Glisic, wrote the book 90 Years Later, rooting from the story of this famous vampire, and was in fact published 17 years before Bram Stoker's Dracula. And then in 1973, all of the stories of the vampire were turned into Serbia's first horror film, Butterfly. The old Sava mill was left abandoned for a long time until it 
it was renovated by the local owner of the village cafeteria, and after all of these stories swirling, Saba has become a local legend, and tourists come from near and far to visit this mill. Many still believe that Saba to this day still haunts the mill, and it's considered one of the most haunted places in all of Serbia. Number 5 on this list is Tranquil Sanatorium in British Columbia. Tranquil Sanatorium has quite an extensive and tragic history to it, which has caused its walls to be the home to many undead spirits. A sanatorium, if you weren't familiar, is an establishment which has the sole purpose of housing those with long term illnesses and is often associated with tuberculosis. The one that we're talking about right now is no different. It was built in 1907 as a facility to treat people with tuberculosis, however it didn't stay like this for very long. The purpose of the facility eventually changed to become an insane asylum. It acted as this mental institute for a while until finally becoming abandoned in the late 1980s. Due to its deep history with death, disease, mental illness, it's no wonder that the Tranquil Sanatorium is now deeply haunted. The layout of this facility screams something out of a Stephen King book. It has several buildings that are connected by poorly lit underground tunnels. The building itself looks all too eerie from the outside as well with dirty cream colored walls that have seen far better days as rot and mold slowly devour them. Visitors of this place report feeling extremely uneasy. A common note for most people that visit is the presence of orbs. Strange balls of light that flutter throughout the building and then disappear. Some people have reported seeing a ghostly apparition on the 6th floor. This ghost takes the form of a woman not older than 30. She appears to be crying and screaming. The tunnels are said to be particularly haunted. People have reported screams coming from nowhere, flashes of movement, menacing and animalistic groans that make you feel as if somebody is right behind you. Children can also be heard playing every now and again in some of the more open areas of the building. Clearly this place's dark history has impacted it greatly and just because physical humans decided to abandon it in the 80s doesn't mean that it was truly abandoned for good. Number 4 on this list is the Firkins House. The Firkins House is part of Fort Edmonton Park which, you guessed it, is located in Edmonton, Alberta. Fort Edmonton Park is a little tourist attraction that has buildings from 1885, 1905 and 1920 to represent the homes of the time. One of the houses is the Firkins House. This home is interesting because during my research I couldn't find any particular evidence of wrongdoings or tragic events at this home. In fact, for the most part, it seems like a pretty normal house. People have lived there before and no harm has befell them, but it seems that after they moved out and the home was donated, that's when things started to go a little bit haywire. There are reportedly three ghosts or demons that haunt this home, each one scarier and more dangerous than the next. The first one is the ghost of a beautiful floating woman who is dressed in all white. People have said that they've spotted her in the windows of the home looking out at them or slowly drifting throughout the living room. The second one is the ghost of a little boy. The boy will appear to certain people looking extremely ill. It is currently unknown if this boy died in and around the area or what disease he is suffering from, but it is said that he resides in the home with the woman in white. The third being is by far the scariest of all three. A ventriloquist dummy that will appear in the home or in the cupboards. This thing can move all by itself and talk by itself. It is very similar to the popular horror franchise Chucky and it's said by some to be seeking to harm the living. I'm not sure if the ghost of the ventriloquist has taken over this dummy or if the dummy has taken on its own persona, but I definitely do not want to go anywhere where the primary residence is a demon puppet. Number 3 on this list is the Five Fisherman Restaurant. This is a restaurant in Halifax, Nova Scotia known for its exceptional oysters and also its ghostly inhabitants. The ground that this restaurant sits on wasn't always utilized for serving up fish and chips though. In fact, it has a very long history. In the early 1800s is when the building went up and for a long time it acted as the town's only school. Nothing ghoulish or demonic about that. However, at around the turn of the century the school moved and the building took on a new purpose. It became the mortuary for Halifax and made its dealings with the dead. Now not every mortuary is going to become haunted, but this one had quite a lot to deal with over the years. In 1912 the unsinkable ship, the Titanic, 
sunk. It sunk roughly 640 kilometers off of the eastern shores of Canada and therefore the closest places to assist with the rescue was these eastern provinces. Halifax acted as the leader in these rescue processes and because of that the mortuary had an onslaught of bodies of people whom had died on the ship. Five years after that tragedy, Halifax incurred one of their own with the massive Halifax explosion. This was where a munitions ship exploded and it killed roughly 2,000 people just like that. This mortuary served as the primary designation for both of these incidents and due to the unnatural deaths here, it makes sense that some spirits have clung on. Guests and employees alike have reported seeing ghosts all over this mortuary that turned restaurant. One of the dishwashers reported running out of the restaurant when he looked up from what he was doing and was staring directly at a ghost like Spectre. The restaurant has attempted to have serious renovations done. However, I don't think that any amount of structural changes will get these spirits to rest for good. Number two on this list is the Frank Slide. Now even though the Frank Slide sounds like it could be a fun, popular dance move that takes over TikTok for a few weeks, it is far more morbid than that. On April 29th in 1903 in the mining town of Frank, which at that time was part of the Northwest Territories, but it is now a section of Alberta, there was a horrible tragedy. 110 million tons of limestone and rock came tumbling down in one of Canada's biggest landslides ever. This fell onto part of the town of Frank. Frank was located right next to Turtle Mountain, which after extensive mining had grown unstable. On April 29th, it all came crashing down and claimed the lives of 70 to 90 people. It is still to this day Canada's most deadly landslide to ever occur in history and was a horrible tragedy that can only remind us how fleeting life can be. I think the craziest part about this landslide as well is that it wasn't just miners who were killed. Their wives, their families, all of them died at the hands of the Frank Slide. The remains of these bodies were never recovered either as the damage from the slide was far too devastating. Where all of this happened is now a section of a town called Crow's Nest Pass and over a century later the ghosts of the dead still haunt the area. This place is somewhere where visitors have reported feeling very unsafe. They say that the overall feelings of uneasiness are almost too much to bear and that they have to leave. Cries howls, screams. This can all be heard late at night as you're trying to sleep. Lanterns will be seen in the night walking around at the hands of unknown apparitions. It is basically a full ghost town of people who never deserve to die in the first place, all wanting to get a second just to feel their lives again as they were so unfairly ripped away from them. Definitely one of Canada's most horrific tragedies and now home to one of its most haunted locations. Number one on this list is the Banff Springs Hotel. This hotel is located in Banff, Alberta and is truly one of the creepiest places that I've ever read about. Now first off, I want to note the hotel itself looks gorgeous on the outside. The beautiful nature it is surrounded by is stunning and the hotel gives me some serious Harry Potter Hogwarts vibes. However, when I say that this place is surrounded by nature, I really mean it. It is totally out on its own with no other buildings in sight at all. The secluded site has been around for 132 years and has housed its fair share of visitors. Some of these visitors have had some incredible stays. I mean, when you look it up online, the hotel has a 4.7 Google rating. So, I mean, it's pretty freaking good. Some of the guests, though, they never checked out. In the 1920s, a couple was set to have their wedding at this hotel. On the day of the ceremony, though, the bride, while she was walking down one of the hotel's beautiful marble staircases, tripped and fell, smacking her head on her descent and dying on the spot. This bride's spirit is one of the most notable sightings people have had when they're staying at this hotel. It's it's said that they often see a phantom in a wedding dress ascending and descending the stairs very quickly. She's also been seen in the ballroom dancing alone, potentially dreaming of the dance that she wanted so desperately to have with the husband that she never got to marry. In 1975, a longtime bellman of the Hotel Sam died there. Since then, sightings of Sam have been pretty consistent. One story details how two women lost their room key and called the front desk to go and get it. The front desk person sent someone to go and open the room for these ladies. When that person had got there though, the ladies were already in the room and said that another bellman had let them in. They described Sam to a T when they spoke about the bellman who helped them out. Instances like this have occurred time and time again at the hotel with many people believing his spirit is still working there. Finally with this hotel, you have room 873. Room 873 is rumored to be the home of a gruesome murder. One evening a family was staying there and the father for some unknown reason lost his mind murdering his family and himself. After completely 
completely refurbishing the room, the hotel put it back in service. But now people who have stayed there report hearing the screams and the cries as if they were still dying. If you have to stay at this hotel, definitely avoid room 873. Coming in at number 5, we have the Bangara Fort, India. The Bangara Fort is a 17th century fort built in Rajasthan, India, originally being built by the Bhagwan Das for his younger son, Madho Singh. According to legend, a Sudhu, also known as a holy person, named Baba Balak Nath lived within the fort area, and it was his injunction that any house built in the precinct of the fort should not be taller than his own, and if the shadow of any such house fell on his, it would result in destruction of the fort. Another tale states that a wizard adept in black magic fell in love with a beautiful princess who had many suitors. One day the wizard followed her to the marketplace and offered her a love potion, however she refused, throwing it onto a large rock that consequently rolled onto the wizard and was said to have crushed him to death. However, before his death, it was said that the disgruntled sorcerer put a curse on the fort, which resulted in folks fleeing and the site remaining uninhabited. If you prefer your vacations to be on the spiritual side, you can visit the fort. However, its crumbling rocks and abandoned structures make it incredibly unsettling. You have been warned. Coming in at number 4, we have the Fairmont Banff Springs Hotel, Canada. The Fairmont Banff Springs Hotel is an historic hotel located in Banff, Alberta, aka one of my favourite places on earth. Got it right here. Bam. <laughs> the entire town is situated in Banff National Park, with the hotel overlooking a valley towards Mount Rundle. The hotel opened its doors back in 1888 by the Canadian Pacific Railway as one of the earliest of Canada's Grand Railway hotels. In 1926, though, a fire destroyed the original structure, with a replacement being built in 1928. As of right now, the hotel welcomes many tourists from around the world who want to explore the beauty at Banff. However, it gets a tad more gothic once you get inside the hotel. The Calgary Herald has reported that the hotel houses several ghosts, including a bride who was said to have fallen down the stone staircase during her wedding, which is tragic and absolutely devastating. However, there is a less upsetting one. Sam the Bellman is also said to be a lingering ghost at the Banff Springs Hotel. He worked there until 1975 and claimed he would come back to haunt the hotel after he was gone, and that he did. According to some, he supposedly pulls shifts to help people with their bags before disappearing into thin air. In an Number 3 of Vodny Canal, St. Petersburg, Russia A Vodny Canal is the longest canal in St. Petersburg, Russia, which in the 19th century served as the southern limit of the city. The canal was dug in 1769 and by the late 19th century, after the Industrial Revolution, it had effectively become a sewer, collecting wastewater of adjacent industrial enterprises. Nowadays the channel is very shallow, navigation is allowed, but only for small crafts. Running 5 miles through the city, the canal since goes by another the name, a much more sinister name, Suicide Canal. Ever since the canal's construction back in the 18th century, strange events have surrounded the area, some of which included the construction workers complaining of headaches, sudden outbursts of violence, and of course, as the name states, suicides. Now, while most attempts were successful, those who survived their attempts have claimed that they didn't know why they jumped in the water, and that it felt as though an invisible force was pulling them off the banks and into the murky depths. Some even claim that the force comes from the restless souls lurking beneath the water, with some survivors even claiming to see a woman in white floating in the water before suddenly disappearing. Very spooky indeed. So if you ever find yourself in St. Petersburg, I would suggest steering clear of the Obvodny Canal. Coming in at number 2, the Stanley Hotel, Colorado. The Stanley Hotel is a colonial revival hotel located in Colorado, approximately 5 miles from the Rocky Mountain National Park. The hotel was built by Freeland Oscar Stanley of Stanley Steamer fame and opened its doors on July 4th, 1909 as a resort for upper class easterners and a health retreat for sufferers of pulmonary tuberculosis. Now, more importantly, the Stanley Hotel served as the inspiration for the Overlook Hotel in Stephen King's novel The Shining, as well as the filming location for the 1997 miniseries. In the fall of 1974, Stephen King and his wife stopped for a night at the old hotel, during which time the hotel had fallen on hard times and was a ghost of its former self. Upon arriving, King learned that the hotel was closing for the winter and that only a skeleton crew would remain. Despite that, the couple checked into room 217, the presidential suite, and were the only paying customers there at the time. That night, according to King, he had a nightmare in which he saw his young son being chased down the hallway of the hotel by a possessed fire hose. He woke up in a sweat, stepped onto the balcony for a cigarette, and by the time he went back inside, he had worked out the bones for what would eventually be his third novel, The Shining. Honestly, that story gives me chills. Despite a peaceful early history, in the year 
years following the release of The Shining, the hotel gained a reputation as a setting for paranormal activity. Not to mention it has hosted numerous paranormal investigators appearing in shows such as Ghost Hunters and Ghost Adventures. On top of that, the hotel offers guided tours which features spaces reputed to be exceptionally haunted. And finally, coming in at number 1 we have Castle of Good Hope, Cape Town, South Africa. The Castle of Good Hope, known to the Cape Town residents as the Castle, is a fort built all the way back in the 17th century by the Dutch East Indian Company and is the oldest existing building in South Africa. The fort was built to act as a replenishment station for ships passing the treacherous coast around the Cape on voyages between the Netherlands and the Dutch East Indies, now Indonesia. The fortress was said to have housed a church, a bakery, Workshops, living quarters, shop cells, and various other facilities. In 1936, the castle was declared an historical monument, making it the first site in South Africa to be protected. However, like the rest of the numbers on this list, the castle is home to some otherworldly residents. Back in the 1700s, Governor Peter Van Noot was said to have condemned several men to be hanged to death, with one of the men cursing the governor from the gallows. Creepier still, Van Noot went on to die later that day of a heart attack. According to the official website of the castle, his ghost has been haunting the grounds ever since. Number 5 on this list is the Plaza Theatre Performing Arts Centre. Built in 1930, this beautiful theatre has had many shows and screenings here over the years. For 55 years, it was in operation as one of the premier spots to have your movie shown, but in 1985, the theatre shut down. It remained as such for about 20 years when in 2006, it began to get renovated. Now it's mainly just for live theatre and other performance art in the city of El Paso. Like a lot of beautiful old theatres though, as Time passes, legends emerge, and this one in particular certainly has its fair share. The Plaza Theatre for Performance Arts Centre has three primary ghostly apparitions at houses. The first is our very standard and very classic drifting woman in white. Looking sad and down on her luck, the spirit of this woman will often drift around through the rafters and has been seen by many workers throughout the years. The second is a man in all black who materializes in front of people. He's described a bit like a shadow creature, but slightly less menacing. I suppose if we have our woman in white, it's only fitting that we have a man in black to get a little bit of variety going. The third ghost sticks with the theme of spicing things up and is actually a little boy with a bouncing ball. It's not a basketball, but a small bouncy ball that the child seemingly plays with as he haunts the theater. Nobody knows the origin of these ghosts or how they got here at all. Are they connected? Maybe once a family unit who died here together, or are they all separate and have each suffered strange tragedies at this location over the century? El Paso I'm sure has some other theaters and I'd stick to those ones if you're looking to watch some live shows if you're there. Number 4 on this list is Henley Row. Located on the Texan island of Galveston on the Gulf Coast, this is the most famous haunted spot for locals in the region. Texas Highways writes, It's not surprising that Henley Row is a hot spot for supernatural activity. Completed between 1855 and 1858 for shippers and cotton brokers, it was the town's tallest structure during the Civil War. The roof doubled as a Confederate lookout for Union ships. Galveston and nearby Barrier Islands, history had been laced with tragedy. It was the site of a bloody civil war fight and serial epidemics of yellow fever decimated the populace. Hurricanes blast through regularly, the 1990 storm left up to 12,000 casualties in the worst natural disaster in US history. No wonder Texas writer Brian Woolley called Galveston an old cemetery with a beach attached. The resident ghosts of Henley Row represent aspects of Galveston history. There's the confederate soldier seen on the roof and around the building. The bloodied teenage factory worker is a vestige of the building's cotton grading days. The lady in white and the running and playing little boy and little girl are thought to be 1900 storm victims. The upper floors house apartments and offices now, but Henley Market's glass ceiling reveals views of stairs and landings. During renovations, workers reported tools mysteriously moving around. Staff recall other spooky experiences as well. Some years ago, a friend gave her old photo of Dr. Wilbur from a house on Church Street that's always displayed in the shop. When Hurricane Ike inundated the building with 10 feet of water in 2008, the photo went undamaged. 
damaged while many other things were destroyed. Every year on November 1st, employees construct an elaborate Day of the Dead altar that includes the photo and lighted candles. Before closing, the staff follows a three-person backup routine to ensure the candles are completely extinguished, even dousing them with water. Yet almost every single year, one or more candles are burning the next morning. I can't imagine working at a place where we had to light candles for our ghost altar. Like that action alone would make me want to quit immediately. I suppose the one good thing is that the ghosts here don't appear to be particularly evil or wanting to inflict harm. Still though, waking up and heading to work is already a tall task as it is, but knowing that there's a dead little boy and girl waiting there? Yeah, that's a solid no-go for me. Number three on this list is the USS Lexington. The ship has its own museum dedicated to it now, and it is 100% haunted. The decommissioned World War II aircraft carrier is riddled with different phantoms. This museum is literally said to receive, on average, hundreds of reports of ghostly apparitions in one year. That is so much supernatural energy that is just congregated here. Now, World War II was obviously an awful time, and if this boat played a major role in the Battle of the Atlantic, which I imagine it did, then it assuredly saw its fair share of tragedies. The ghosts are not quiet about their presence, they make themselves very known. One of the most famous ones resides in the engine room. Apparently visitors will go there and a spirit will form explaining the engines and how they work. Then when his lecture is over, poof. He will be gone in a puff of smoke. There's also a general sailor that walks around the ship and is actually said to be rather helpful. However, with these tame ghosts, there are some troublemakers as well. Small items that you may have on your person, a wallet, a watch, a phone, a keychain, anything like that are often reported missing after people get on the ship. If you do intend to go here, then hold on to your valuables very closely and get ready for a long lecture on engines. Number two on this list is Bragg Road. For over for 100 years now, this road has been haunted by a very strange and ghostly light. It's been seen by hundreds of people during that time, and nobody can explain it. Texas Highways says, in the heart of the big thicket is Hardin County, and in the heart of Hardin County is the infamous Bragg Road, home to countless sightings of the ghost road light that appears to nighttime travelers on the road between Saratoga and the defunct village of Bragg Station. Before the current road was built, the Arrow Strait clearing served as Santa Fe Railroad's branch line built in 1903. From its inception, locals considered the line haunted by Mexican laborers murdered by a thieving foreman, a deserter shot by Confederate soldiers, a hunter lost forever in the woods, and a decapitated railroad brakeman searching for his head. But all the stories share a common theme, a floating orb of light. The road replaced the railroad tracks in 1934, but the light remained seen by hundreds of people over the decades. In the 1960s, Archer Fullingham, editor of the County News, spread its notoriety in articles. National Geographic published a clear photo of the light in a 1974 feature about the big thicket. Texas folklorist Francis Albernese he documented sighting stories from the old timers and young folks alike. In 1997, Hardin County designated Bragg Road as Ghost Road Scenic Drive Park. A pretty road through the woods in the daytime turns into a spooky spot for supernatural sightings by night. Word is the most auspicious times to see the light are on moonless autumn nights. What the heck is this light that has been haunting this place for all these years? Even National Geographic, a very highly reputable column, has posted stories on it with actual photos and including it. If it's a manifestation of some of these ghosts, then which ghost is causing it? And maybe more importantly, is it dangerous? If you want to find out, then you need to head to Bragg Road and look for yourself, but I wouldn't recommend it, honestly. And finally, number one on this list is the Yorktown Memorial Hospital. This hospital is definitely up there as one of the most haunted spots in Texas and could even make a play for the most haunted spots in America. It was built in the 1950s and managed by the Roman Catholic Church for a few decades before eventually closing down in 1986. Then for eight more years until 1992, it was a drug rehab facility, but finally in 1992, it closed for good. Since then, it's been abandoned and gained some very serious ghostly legends by the locals. One of the most famous demonic creatures that resides here is this black specter with bright glowing red eyes. It's not shy either, 
and will attack you if you're here alone or in a vulnerable state. This is the most famous of the presences here, but it isn't alone. The ghost of a man who appears to have a bullet wound directly in his forehead is also said to live here. His ghost is a lot less forceful than the dark demon though, and is said to just show himself to visitors rather than attack them. The spirits of nuns are said to be on the second floor though as well. These spirits are similar to our demon creature and will claw and scratch at people who decide to come here. Along with all of this, we also get our classic indicators of a haunted location such as feelings of despair as you walk through, temperature changes, and moans echoing throughout the building. Avoid this place at all costs if you want to keep a tight grip of your sanity.